Hello and welcome to Biostats Quit. In this video, I will be explaining what are volcano plots and how to interpret them. So let's get started. So let's start. Imagine you're carrying out an RNA seq experiment. You have a group of cells A and a group of cells B. Group B was additionally treated with a drug. Now, you want to see what effect the drug has uh, on gene expression. Does the drug cause some genes to be upregulated? Does it downregulate the expression of other genes? By how much? A great way to visualize this is using a volcano plot. A volcano plot is just a type of scatter plot that shows statistical significance, usually uh, represented by p-values, versus magnitude of change, um, usually represented by the fold change. So in this case, each dot represents a gene. This way we can quickly identify genes with large fold changes that are also statistically significant. These might be the most biologically significant genes of your experiment. Now, how do we interpret a volcano plot? So the y-axis shows the level of statistical significance. It is usually represented by the p-value, which means the most statistically significant genes are towards the top because they have the lowest p-values. The x-axis, on the other hand, shows the fold change. The fold change is just the ratio between the two groups. So, for example, if we're examining the fold change of gene X, it would be the expression of gene X in condition B divided by the expression of that same gene in condition A. If the expression of a certain gene is higher in group B compared to group A, then the fold change will be positive. This means that the most upregulated genes will be towards the right because they have a positive fold change. If the expression of a certain gene is higher in group A compared to group B, then the fold change will be negative. So the most downregulated genes are towards the left. They have a negative fold changes. This means that they have a lower um, expression in group B compared to A. And of course, if the fold change nears um, zero, then the expression does not really change between one group and another. Now, you might have noticed that the fold change is usually converted to the logarithm to base two. This is because it makes uh, things easier to interpret and it's easier to represent a wider range of values. So let's give an example. If the expression of gene 1 is double as intense in group B versus group A, then the fold change is 2, meaning it's twice as big in B than in A. But the log 2 fold change will be 1. If the expression is 4 times as big, then the log 2 fold change is 2. If the expression is 8 times as big, then the log 2 fold change is 3 then the same happens when the change decreases. If the expression is half as big in group B compared to group A, that is equal to a log two fold change of minus one. A quartering would be equal to a log two fold change of minus two and so on. Let's talk a bit more about the p-values in the y-axis. As you might have noticed, the minus log 10 p-value is the most common way of representing p-values on a volcano plot. But why do we use a minus log 10 p-value? Well, of course, you can also use raw p-values, but aesthetically, it doesn't look that nice. Although, to be fair, they look a bit more like volcano plots. Um, this is because p-values range from 0 to 1, and highly significant genes, which are usually the genes you're interested in, they have really low p-values. We're talking about um, lots and lots of zeros. For example, an, a p-value of an interesting gene might be that big number, or small number, I should say, um, that you see there. But if you, see, uh, but if you take the minus log 10, we get 22. So it's a much nicer uh, number to handle. So remember, 
A volcano plot is used to easily visualize which are the most significant differences and how big is that difference between two groups. The y-axis shows if that change is significant or not, and it is usually in the form of minus log 10 p-value. The x-axis shows the full change, how many times are genes expressed more or less compared to the other group. If you want to check highly significant genes, they will have higher log 10 p-values. If you want down-regulated genes, you usually look to the left to negative fold changes. Up-regulated genes will then be to the right with positive fold changes. So this is the end of this video. I hope you liked it. If you found it useful, do let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you would like more content, do let me know. Your feedback is really important to me. And that is all for today. So see you in the next one.